Good morning to everyone. Thank you for coming to celebrate the life of Sister Abby Jones. She was a blessing to so many. It's good to see and as you all come out this morning. I have so much more good things to say about it, but I'm going to say, I'm going to save it. The word of comfort coming up soon. Let us pray together. Most kind and merciful Heavenly Father, we thank you for waking us up this morning, for allowing us to see another day here in the life of the living. Father, we thank you for the life of Sister Abby Jones. Thank you for the many blessings that she has given to all the people that she has blessed and touched, um, all of her family members that she leaves behind her. Lord, we ask you to comfort them um, as they miss her, um, as they grieve their loss. Father, also, we thank you that she was in your church, Father, that, that she is now resting in paradise, Father. We thank you for, for the opportunity to, to tell others to, to live the life that she lived, that they might be able to go where she is. We ask you that everything done today will be done pleasing in your sight, and that if she was here, she would enjoy it as well. We ask you all these things in Christ's name. Amen. Amen. Scripture reading at this time. We're going to sing this song here, uh, Wild Out of Run This Race. And we're here to sit and celebrate the life of Sister Andy Jones. Where's Henry? Did Henry come to y'all?
yourself. Lord, in this race, we vain. Lord, have mercy to have a judgment day surprise. To think that you are on the right track. And, and then when he says, depart from me. For I never knew you. Lord, have mercy. But thank God we're running this race on the right track. And seeing the end in my eyes. At this time, we're going to have reflections. Um, any family or friends that would like to say something, share some, some kind of funny stories. <laughs> um, yeah, I love that. Um, you can step up to the mic here. Uh, please, uh, if you could, limit it to two minutes.
stadium, right? Like, it, was, it was just a mystery to me. It was so much joy up in um, what she was saying. But, uh, like I said, 95 years, man. That's a long time. <laughs> just, like, just like my little sister said, man. You shouldn't, something like this shouldn't have to happen yeah. for all of us to come together like that. Yeah. It's a celebration.
I'm just gonna miss everything. Just the long talks, us sitting up snapping, <laughs> talking, just chilling on the porch all day. When I get mad at everybody, I run across the street. That's it. <laughs> I'm gonna miss it. And I love it. And we should have very much appreciated when she did, 95 years. And I was, I was, I was very blessed to be a part of the seed that. And I just thank God and I thank God for blessing that I was able to share that with her just to be in her life for that little bit of time and see her and that wisdom and just give me a little bit of that. Thank God for that and I thank all of y'all uh, for sharing y'all from my mom with me because she was just like that. We just treated me real good, my kids, everybody. And my mom, she was saying, you know, she said, I hate your mom. Got some 
water. I got in the chill <laughs> on this side. I looked at the boat was gone. Oh, <laughs>
I'm going to take you fishing. And uh, I promised her and my granddaughter I was going to take her fishing. I said, well, I got to find a nice place to take you guys. But I don't want nobody falling in the water the way I did. <laughs> but you know what? I was unable to keep that promise before she left. Um, but uh, God was to my intention. And uh, I always would pass by and put my hand up at it and wave. And uh, she would wave back, gives that big smile. But it had just been so nice to know her and know the family of Sister Kelly here and uh, my friend Moses. And uh, it was so nice. And uh, I've been going to this little family. And uh, another thing here, uh, this is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Because Sister Jones. She lived a fruitful life. Yeah. Lord, I you three scores and ten. When I reached three scores and ten, I thought I had some under my belt. <laughs> if you look across the way there, you see somebody that beat you about 20 years. <laughs> and hey, three scores and ten, and then another score in strength. Yeah. So, I want to say to the family, yeah, you never know what she's saying. You have gained something. If we could all count our life after Sister Jones here, then we will be a better people. She was real respected in this congregation. She was real respected in our neighborhood. And we just love her. And we want you to know that. And if anything that we can do, Sister Kelsey, I'm just a phone call away. You got to know. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you. 
I was, I was, I know y'all, see, y'all probably seen me the other day when I was breaking down. I'm trying to stay strong today, but that was something like a best friend to me. Yeah. I could, I could be mad with my brother, with my daddy, with my grandma, with my girl, and I would go over there. No judgment zone. Say what yeah. I want to say, yeah. and she'll just say that. She'll listen. She'll respond. Yeah. And if she want to say something negative, she want to say it. She <laughs> want to say it more positive. She want to. But that's what I love about it. The realness of us. Never fake. Yeah. No misery. Thank y'all for sharing y'all. I love y'all. Thank you.
I go to the house and she said, uh, uh, you know, she was sugar, you know. And then by the time they talk on the phone or at the house, five minutes. I said, Mom, it's five minutes. Uh, five minutes. You know how long it is when you start talking. On the phone or off the phone. <laughs> so I just decided to just get going. So I love them. You know. And I got young people with me. I got some of them. I already got one in the woodworks. Talk to them today. Um, so they say, we're all in love, y'all. And the whole world is a family. I'm just taking on some Jesus Christ. You know. Just take it to another mom, okay? Just say amen again.
I can certainly tell that she has left a mark on all of your lives in an amazing and powerful way. Um, what, a, what a wonderful, wonderful woman she was and is. Um, may God add a blessing to you um, through the deeds of her life. Um, may you all remember um, what she has done and all the conversations that you've had and all the times that you've shared. And um, perhaps you can relate to this song this song is talking about our Lord, that we never would have made it without him. But, but a lot of times, the, the mothers, the aunties, the cousins, the mother-like figures and the best friends that we have, sometimes we never could make it without them as well. Dedication 
that shows the strength of this woman up until the very end, coming to the worship service and serving God all the way. Oh, man, it, it's, it's just an amazing thing. And I would see her coming out. Um, she would she would always give me a hug and, and tell me, you know, you know, keep going. You're doing a good job. And I have uh, three young kids, and, and I have one more on the way, but I have four now. And she would always tell me, uh, hey, you know, if you want somebody to watch, watch your kids, I'll watch them. I said, I said OK. Okay, don't worry, you're going to sit them back. <laughs> don't worry, you're going to sit them back. But, but I'm pretty sure that she would have she watched them and she would, they would have had a great time with her. Man, and, and I'm telling you, this was just a few weeks ago. Just a few weeks ago. This, this wonderful, amazing, and faithful woman. Praise God for her life. And I can tell by all of your stories, all your comments, that she has had an amazing impact on your lives and that she has shown you what God can do and how, how powerful he is. And when you put him first, you can see five generations. Five generations of children. That, that is an amazing blessing to live to be 95 years old. Look, if you look at the obituary, it says 1928. Where was I that time? 28. Lord have mercy, that's a long time ago. Praise God that she was able to live that long. Yes. And you know what? She's also gonna continue to live. Yes. She's gonna live on. Because I believe 100% that, that she is going to be resting in paradise. That she might be talking to Abraham and Isaac and Jacob right now. So, and, and, and celebrating the life that she's lived and, and remembering all the things that she has done and, and rejoicing in the fact that now she can rest. And that smile that she always had, I bet you was bigger now. She has a bigger smile now because she's resting in paradise. But I want to tell you something. If you want to go where Sister Jones is right now, if you want to go where she is, you have to follow the path that she followed. So one day, there's going to be a leak in your building. And your soul is going to have to move. And you don't know when your time is because I'm telling you, I've been to a lot of funerals lately and all of them weren't 95. All of them weren't 70. All of them weren't 50. There were some young people that have passed away. There were tragedies that have happened. What I'm trying to tell you is, is that you don't know when your time is coming. So you need to be prepared. You need to watch and be ready. Like Sister Jones was. I want to tell you about the church that Sister Jones was a part of. It's not this building here. It's not this ceiling and this wall. It's not this floor. It's not some special denomination. It's the church that was established in Acts chapter 2 in the Bible. It's the church that Christ died for. It's the one that he started talking about from the beginning of his ministry when he said, when he's talking about the repentance for the kingdom of heaven is ahead, he's talking about the church. The kingdom of heaven, the kingdom of God is the church. If you want to be a part of the kingdom, if you want to live forever in paradise, if you don't want to have to worry about anything when death comes knocking at your door and you can be ready to go because you realize that this is just a temporary tent, that this is just a temporary place where I am. This world is not my home. I'm just a passing through. And when you realize that, yes, yes. you'll make the decision to obey the gospel. Yeah. Some people do not believe that the kingdom is the church. So I have to tell you, I have to show you how it is. In Mark chapter 9 okay. and verse 1, yes. I'm, trying to, I'm trying to make it fast this, this, uh, this, this afternoon. Yes. I, I want to go get some food. All right? I'm, I'm a little hungry right now. We're going to go eat. All right? But I got to tell you about this message because Solomon told me it's, it's better to go into the house of mourning. See, see, what he meant by that was that when you go into the house of mourning, you start to reflect 
upon your life. It's, it's better to go into the house of mourning than it is to go to a party. Why is that? When I go to a party, I'm having a good time. I'm having fun. All I'm thinking about is trying to enjoy myself. But Solomon was giving you wisdom when he said, it's better to go into the house of mourning because now I'm going to think about my life. Yeah. I'm going to think about, man, maybe I need to change some things. Maybe that argument that I was having with my cousin ain't worth it no more. Maybe, maybe the, the, the drama that's going on, maybe it's not worth it. Maybe we need to just let that stuff go. Maybe I need to change my life around. I know I grew up in the church. I know what Sister Jones was trying to teach me. Maybe it's time to do what she said. When you go into the house of mourning, you reflect on your life. She was a part of the kingdom. Listen to what Jesus said about it in Mark chapter 9 verse 1. And he said unto them, Verily I say unto you, that there be some of them that stand here, which shall not taste of death till they have seen the kingdom of God come with power. Some people teach that, that the kingdom of God is going to come down and Jesus is going to reign here on earth. But that. Jesus said to his disciples, some of you will not die until you have seen the kingdom with your eyes. They have seen it with their eyes, the kingdom of God come with power. How does, do we do we have some people that are over 2,000 years old today? No, we do not. So that means that the kingdom came in their lifetime. Jesus told Peter exactly what he was going to do regarding the kingdom. He said, and I say also unto thee in Mark, Matthew chapter 16 and verse 18, that thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it, and I will give unto thee the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Yes. You can read the whole chapter of Mark of Matthew 16, and he does not talk about the kingdom not once. Why, why is that significant, preacher? I'm trying to tell you that he's using the kingdom and the church interchangeably there. Yes. Yes. He's using those words interchangeably, which means Jesus believed, and whatever he believes, I believe, that the kingdom is the church. And he said, I'm going to give you the keys to the kingdom, and whatever thou shalt bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. He gave Peter the keys to the kingdom, and Peter unlocked it in Acts chapter 2 with his first gospel sermon. But that's not all. Okay. He told the disciples what to do concerning the kingdom's arrival in Luke 24. He said, and said unto them, thus it is written, and thus it behooved Christ to suffer and to rise from the dead the third day, and that repentance and remission of sins should be preached in his name among all nations, beginning at Jerusalem. What happened in Acts chapter 2? All the, the Jews from all across all nations Everything. came. They were speaking Everything. all types of different languages, but when they were speaking in tongues, they were able to understand everything in their own languages. And it was in Jerusalem. This is when this came to pass. And it said, and ye are witnesses of these things. And behold, I send promise of my father upon you. But he said, listen, my disciples, wait, wait. says, tarry ye wait. in Jerusalem yeah. until you be endured with power from on high. Listen in Colossians chapter 1 and verse 13, it says, Who hath delivered us from the power of darkness and translated us into the kingdom of his dear son, in whom we have redemption through his blood? How if, is the kingdom coming uh, when Christ comes back? When he said that people have already been translated there. Um, and people are already in the kingdom. It also says in Revelation chapter 1 and verse 9. Yeah. That I, John, who also am your brother and companion in tribulation. And in the kingdom and the patience of Jesus Christ. John said, I'm your brother. Brother John. We call each other sisters and brothers. Sister Addie Jones is also there. With John, where he said, I am your companion in the kingdom of Jesus Christ. So the kingdom has already come. But what is the kingdom? 
Good question, bro. Yeah, you don't have, you don't have, you don't have a Bible app on your phone. I want you to look at it if you can. Turn with me to Book of Acts. If you want to know about the church, if you want to know about the kingdom of God, the Book of Acts is the acts of the apostles, but the acts also of the church of Christ, the kingdom of God. In Acts chapter 1 and verse 1, listen, the former treaties have I made of Theophilus of all that Jesus began to do and teach until the day which he is, was taken up. After that, he through the Holy Ghost had given commandments unto the apostles whom he had chosen, to whom also he showed himself alive after his passion by many infallible proofs, being seen of them forty days, and speaking of the things pertaining to what? Are you there? Are you looking at it? I want you to read it. Pertaining to the kingdom of God. What is the, the whole the whole premise of the book of Acts is about the acts of the apostles, the acts of the church, but it opens up talking about the kingdom of God. It's because the kingdom of God is the church. And being assembled together with them, commanded them that they should not depart from where? From Jerusalem. What did he tell them in Luke? Don't tarry ye in Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the Father, which saith he, ye have heard of me. For John truly baptized with water, but ye shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost. Many days hence, and you see what happened, is that there was a rushing, the sound of a rushing mighty wind, and the Holy Spirit fell upon those men, and they began to speak in tongues. They began to speak in the language where everybody could understand in their own tongue. That is the baptism of fire that he was talking about. See here in Acts chapter 2, you say, and it says, when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. And thank you, Brother Gibbons, for teaching me this. Listen, Pentecost is 50. I want you to do some math with me right now. Seven times seven is 49. And one plus that is 50. How many days are there in a week? Seven. There are seven days in a week. So that means that 49 was Saturday. And 50 was on Sunday morning. The day of Pentecost. On Sunday morning, these men were gathered together and the Holy Spirit. That's why we worship God on Sunday, not Saturday. Lord have mercy. All right, all right. We worship God on the first day of the week. Amen. And the day of ten Pentecost was fully come, and with all they were all with one accord in one place, and suddenly there came a sound from heaven as a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting, and they appeared unto them cloven tongues like as a fire, and it sat upon each of them. They were all baptized with fire. That's the baptism that he was talking about in Acts chapter 1. But listen, Peter preached unto these men. He said, listen, you killed Christ. You know the one that is prophesied about in the old covenant, in the law, that you've been trying to follow, that you've been uh, holding dear and rejecting Christ. You know that it preached about Christ. And you know you, you. murdered him. Yeah, you did. He preached that sermon to them. And they believed it. They believed. They knew that they killed the Christ the son of the living God. And here they said, men and brethren, what shall we do? In Acts chapter 2 and verse 38, then Peter said unto them, this is what you have to do. This is what you have to do. Peter said, repent. That's not all. And be baptized for ice in the Greek, meaning in order to receive Repent and be baptized in order, ice, in order to receive what? The remission of sins. Peter said, this is what you have to do. You need to repent and be baptized for the remission of sins. Every one of you, not some people getting baptized, not if you feel like getting baptized, not maybe let's do it next week when you want to, getting baptized. He said, every one of you be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ.
for the remission of sins, and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. For the promise is unto you and to your children and to all that are afar off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. And listen, listen, in this verse, verse, <clears throat> verse 40, then they that gladly received, listen, they that gladly received his words were baptized and the same day there were added, I want you to take note of that word there, added, because, because you have to be added to the church. You have to be added. There is no voting for whether or not you can join the church because Jesus is the one who adds to the church. Jesus Christ is the one who adds to the church. According to the very last verse of the chapter in Acts 2.47, praising God and having favor with all the people and the Lord added to the church daily as such as you may say. It says, they that gladly received his words were baptized, and there were added to them 3,000 souls. 3,000 people were added that, were, that gladly received his word and were baptized. Now let's go back to 47. It says, praising God and having favor with all people, and the Lord added the same word to the church who those that are saved you know what that tells me that tells me that the people that are saved hear the gospel preached they are taught the gospel they believe it like these men did they repent and they are baptized and after that they are added to the church all the time I was right now the church is the king. Yes. Right. Yes. I'm going to say it one more time. I heard this is time. not. This building here, this ceiling, these walls don't mean nothing. What the church is, is the people that have obeyed the gospel. If you want to be added to that number, like we sing about when we sing, Oh, when the saints go marching in. Oh, Lord, I want to be in that number. If you want to be added to that number, you need to be baptized for the remission of sins. I want to ask you something. I, I don't mean no trouble. Okay. Where's the Lord's prayer in this? I don't, I don't, I don't mean no harm, but, but I, I got a message. In this, in this chapter, the first conversion of the church, yes. where is the Lord's prayer? Did Peter say, men and brethren, you already believe, so you're saved? No. Did Peter say, men and brethren, all you have to do is say this prayer. Come pray with me, and your sins will be washed away. I, I got a question. Why did Peter say that? Why did he rub him? Well, Peter said, repent and be baptized for the remission of sins. You wonder why he said that? Because that's the way. It's, it's plain as day. It's written. You have to believe. You do have to believe. Because faith is the foundation of salvation. Yes, if you don't believe, there is nothing to be built upon. You start off with the belief. You start off with the changed heart. Because that's what these men had. You know, when Christ was crucified, he said, Father, forgive them, yes, for they know not what they do. These are the men. His prayer was answered. These men were forgiven. These men had their sins washed away. They did it by believing. They heard the gospel. They heard it preached to them. They believed. They repented and they were baptized. And Jesus added 
them to the church. So why is this important? Jesus was talking about the kingdom from the beginning of his ministry. Listen, in 1 Corinthians 15, 24, if you want, if you want to be where Sister Jones is, listen to this. In 1 Corinthians 15, 24, it says, then come the end. I hear it. Well, I don't hear people ask, what, what's going to happen? What's going to happen when I die? Are the, the, the prophecies and revelation coming, coming true? Uh, is, this, is this happening? Listen, then cometh the end. When he shall have delivered up the kingdom to God. He is going to deliver the kingdom to God. This is why it's important to know that the kingdom is the church. And that you need to be added to the church. And that you need to obey the gospel to be added to the church. Because it says here that he's going to deliver the kingdom to God. That means he's going to deliver the church to God. And I'm going to tell you, I want to be delivered. That's not true, amen. I want to be delivered to God. Amen. So I need to be a part of the kingdom. Then come at the end when he shall have delivered up the kingdom to God, even the Father, when he shall have put down all rule and all authority and power, for he must reign till he hath put all enemies under his feet. The last enemy that shall be destroyed is death. In order to be a part of the kingdom, you have to obey the gospel. But it's not once saved, always saved either. You have to try your best. Because in 1 Corinthians 6, 9, it says, Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God. You have to try your hardest to try and not sin. I know we're going to slip and fall sometimes. We're human. We're going to make a mistake sometimes. Somebody made you mad and you cussed them out. Maybe I don't know. Let God let you. Repent. Change. Try not to do it again. The unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Be not deceived, neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor feminine, nor abusers of themselves or mankind, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drinkers, nor revilers, nor extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of God. But listen, it says, and such were some of you. And such was me. But I've been washed, the Bible says. And I've been sanctified. Amen. And I've been justified yes. in the name of the Lord Jesus. Amen. And by the Spirit of our God. Yeah. Listen, in Matthew 17, 5. While he yet spake, behold, a bright cloud overshadowed him. And behold, a voice out of the cloud that said, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. This is God's voice coming from heaven. He said, Hear me, him. The words of Jesus in Matthew 7, 21. Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. But who will? Who will, Christ? He that doeth the will of my Father in heaven. He that doeth the will of my Father in heaven. Many will say unto me that they, Lord, Lord, have you not prophesied in thy name? And in thy name cast out devils? And in thy name done many wonderful works? And then I will profess unto them, I never knew you. Therefore, whosoever hears these sayings of mine and doeth them, I will liken him unto a wise man. So the father said, hear the son. The son said, do my father's will. Obey his commandments. And this is what he said at the end, right before he ascended up to heaven. You can't, you can't make this more clear. Here's one of the last things that he said. That? He said, go ye into all the world yes. and preach the gospel to every creature. He, he, out of those people that you preach to, he said, he that believes and, and, and is baptized shall be saved. He that believes shall be saved. Yes. He that only believes. <coughs> he that believes. And coordinating conjunction pointing back towards the first verse. For the, 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 the prior uh, statement. Coordinating conjunction pointing back towards the prior statement. Adding it up. 
to himself and is baptized shall be saved. Oh, that verse is clear. Oh, man, it's clear. It's clear. But he that believeth not, if you don't even, if you don't believe, if you don't have the foundation of belief, you'll never get up there anyway. You'll never get to the step of confession. You'll never get to the step of repentance if you don't believe. He that believeth not shall be damned. Do what Jesus said. That's my message this morning. Do what Jesus said. Be added to the church. That's Sister Jones. Be added to the kingdom of God. Just because you're added to the church, it doesn't mean that your life is going to be easy peasy. It doesn't mean that everything is going to go perfect for you. It doesn't mean that you won't have storms. But what it means is that at the end of life, when we all are sitting here at your funeral, we can have a smile on our face. Because we know that you have rest. I'm going to end with this poem. My faith has been challenged, but not overcome. Fighting battles in myself, you win some, you lose some. Sometimes you hurt so much, your heart feels numb. You may be weak and heavy laden, but find rest in his son. You may feel troubled now, but you felt troubled before. Remember when death was knocking at your door? God opened it and snatched you from, from death's grasp. Don't you remember all the times he rescued you in the past? Doctors saw some buildup, told you it was cancer. God said, Doc, no, that's incorrect. This is my child and I won't let it be the answer. What about the accident you were in when you should have died? What about when your child looked up in trouble, was around on all sides? Who was there to protect you? Won't he do it now? Did you forget when your wallet was collecting dust and your card declined at the register and somebody behind you started laughing? The next week you got a raise and a promotion. See, God is not for God. I serve in all power for God. With faithful service, I put my hands to the plow. I know my God will see me through right now. Sometimes I just can't see how because he works in mysterious ways. But all of the perks I get have his signature. I'm a living testimony of his providence. Find your witness right here. God has not forgot what he has done for you. And he also remembers your faithfulness through the storm. When you lost your loved one, you stayed faithful. When you lost your job, you stayed faithful. When you went through divorce, you stayed faithful. You began to see yourself tra transform the new person that came from under the shelter in the time of storm. That saying goes, no pain, no gain, because adversity builds character. But sometimes when you're in the pain, it does, the truth doesn't register. But remember, have you considered that God will deliver whenever, wherever, and his love has no competitor? Find solace in his love. Keep your chin up, look above, and pray. The clouds you see are the pain you feel, and they're going to go away. Sometimes it rains, sometimes it's clear, but either way, God is the shelter that I feel safe in every day. Now that I remember what the Lord has done, I know my faith will be challenged in this life, but it will never be overcome. Amen. Hope that you all got a blessing from this lesson this morning. Once again, thank you all for coming out to celebrate the life of Sister Addie Jones. We will now have our committal and, and get our recession.
Yes, we. 